Today I have a watercolour video creating a soft Thero card with a particularly relevant message in this unprecedented time we are living through at the moment. The stamp sets I'm using come from Colorado Crafts Company New Release. There are three big and bold sets in the release, starting with the Blissful Butterfly set and this has two beautiful butterflies as well as a trio of leaves and a collection of sentiments. Next we have Majestic Moth and I think it is fabulous that this and the next set which is Brilliant Beetle celebrate other insects which are vital for pollination of our crops and flowers and are often overlooked for the more flamboyant butterflies. However, who can deny the wonder of a glossy black and green beetle or the iridescent shimmer of a dragonfly and it is this latter insect I chose to highlight on my card today. In addition, a first for Colorado Crafts is that these new sets will have matching dies. Unfortunately, I don't have the dies to show you as yet because of postal delays due to COVID-19. As I'm setting up this card, just a heads up that there's a giveaway of these sets from Colorado Craft Company. Please watch to the end of the video to find out how you can enter the giveaway. In the meantime, you can only get these sets exclusively from Samsa Stamp for the next two days before general release. As always, I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products I'll be using today. So let's catch up. I'm using a piece of Fabriano Artistico Extra White Cold Pressed watercolour card that I have removed from its gum block with a palette knife. I arranged the dragonfly from the Majestic Moth set with foliage from each of the three sets and I've inked those in antique linen distress ink before dabbing off some of the ink and then stamping. I remove some of the ink so that the images I'm painting don't have too much ink. I want to create the look of no line watercolouring and so the lighter the ink application the better. As long as I have a faint outlined colour then I'm good. I've started this video at real speed so that you can see that it takes time to paint. But I enjoy it and I'm only too willing to spend the time. I've taped the card with a couple of pieces of washi to my craft mat and that is to prevent the card moving around too much as I paint and making you feel travel sick. I've not taped the card down with painter's tape as I'm not going to be using lots of water painting these images and so there's no risk of the paper warping. I'm using Daniel Smith watercolours to paint this image and I recently found a plate with a fluted edge which was just perfect for adding little blobs of paint around the edges while giving me plenty of surface over the rest of the plate for mixing. So you really don't need any fancy palettes or anything, a dinner plate will do. I put this plate in a drawer after I finish painting or throw a cloth over it once I'm done to protect the paints from getting dusty. To paint these leaves I've pulled a couple of puddles of green and blue paint together and I'm dipping into the different colours to add variation to the colours. I have an old cloth to hand to dab off excess paint or water from my brush and I also use this to lift some of the colour from areas of the leaves too, to add highlight areas. Using a damp brush, I gently lift some of the colour away and wipe it on the cloth. You could also use a tiny piece of kitchen roll or tissue to lift the colour too, but I like to keep moving with my brushes, keeping a soothing rhythm going as I paint. I've moved on to the next sprig of leaves now and changed the colours up using a dusky blue mix for these. And I'll switch up the colours again when I paint the third sprig. Varying colours adds interest and gives the eye something to move around and look at, rather than all the leaves being the same. To get the dusky mixes I like, I often turn to colour theory to help. The complementary colour of a paint will mute and knock back a bright colour. So for example, red is opposite green on the colour wheel and it's complementary colour. Using a tiny touch of red in a green mix will mute and muddy the colours. It is a great idea to practice these type of colour mixes. Grab a scrap piece of card, your sketchbook or whatever and have a play. Mix colours together and then make a note of the ones you like for future reference. I decided that a trio of leaves would be the best idea and I wouldn't paint the fourth leaf sprig in the top right corner. I'll save that to paint another day. Now here's the confession time. I'm sometimes nervous about painting the focal point and so to warm up and get myself in the groove I like to paint accent items first. I love leaves and a lot of my cards include them and so leaves for me are a great place to start. Once I've got paint on paper and am in the flow then moving on to the focal point just comes naturally. 
I no longer have that fear of the white empty page. So if you're ever nervous, start small, start on something you are familiar with and have confidence colouring and then move on. I can't remember ever painting a dragonfly before and I wanted to capture the way the light um, reflects on the wings. I don't want heavy layers of colour on the wings, just hints of blues and greens that would catch the light as the dragonfly was in flight. I wanted the body of the dragonfly to be darker but still with lots of light reflecting off its body. So I pick one side, the left side, to be darker than the other and as I continue painting I built up the layers and depth on this side. I wasn't sure how to paint the head and initially left highlight areas for light reflecting off the complex eyes. However, it made it look more of a caricature, a caricature and so I kept the painting of the head relatively simple. At all times I do have the stamp set off to one side and although I'm not using the lines from the stamp set exactly, I am using them to guide me as to where to add depth and detail. I used touches of white gouache to make highlight areas really pop and I used a very fine paintbrush to paint in the antennae. However, you could use a fine pen or even a sharp coloured pencil for this. I wanted this card to have a light ethereal feel of leaves hanging over a pond edge with light bouncing around the place and so I added lots of splatter over the areas I painted. I used a solution of perfect pearls powder for sparkle, white gouache for highlights and also some leftover paint. Although dyes are available for the first time, the postal delays meant that I pulled up my scissors and fussy cut around the leaves and dragonfly. I then set these aside to work on a quick background. I wanted to repeat the colours I'd used so far on a very loosely painted background. I used another piece of Fabriano Ext Artistico Extra White watercolour card, but this time I did tape it to my work surface as I'll be using lots of water. I painted the entire piece with a wide paintbrush and clean clear water and then started to dab the paints I'd used onto the wet surface, letting the water take the colour, spreading it and softly blending the paint together. I used a heat tool to help dry the paint in places and then finished off with more splatter. I cut and scored an A2 card base from Nina Desert Storm card in the £100 weight for steadiness and trimmed the background panel to fit. I played around with arranging the leaves and dragonfly before deciding on which sentiment I wanted to add. I was very drawn to the greeting from the brilliant Beatles set. In such uncertain times, living in the moment seems good advice. I took a piece of Samsa Stamp Ivory card which matches the colour of the water card well and its smooth surface is great for getting a good stamped impression. I then stamped the greeting in Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I stamped it twice to make sure I got a really good black impression and then trimmed out with a scalpel and a ruler. With all the pieces of the card now prepared, I added each element with foam adhesive. First the background watercolour piece and then the leaves and sentiment strip. I played around with the leaves and encouraged one leaf to pop over the sentiment. I trimmed the leaf stems to align with the edge of the watercoloured piece and then finally added the dragonfly. I added one piece of foam tape to the dragonfly body and a double layer to the wings so it looked more like the dragonfly was in flight. I then added a good sprinkling of glossy eggshell pearls and ice crystal sequins, both from Little Things from Lucy's Cards, which I kept in place for Gina K Connect Glue. And that completes this watercolour dragonfly card using the new Big and Bold sets from Colorado Craft Company. Okay, so back to the giveaway. Leave a comment on the coordinating blog post over at limedoodadesign.com. I'll put a link below and I'll draw three winners for these three new sets from comments only left on that post. Although I love seeing your comments here, to enter the giveaway you'll need to hop on over to my blog where you'll find all the details. I'll leave links in the YouTube description to the products that I've used today as well as a coordinating link to the blog post over at limedoodadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel. Also if you'd like to get notified when a new video is out don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button too. Thanks and I'll see you next time.